So there's been a lot of chatter in 2016 about self-driving cars, and understandably so. Because if these vehicles can become fully functional, fully crash-proof, and definitely more energy and time efficient, this would be a complete game changer, not only for the auto and transportation industry, but also real estate as well too. And I decided to do a video to talk about how this major technological shift might come to change how we live, where we live, and how we spend our money. So here are four major changes I see happening that may come to impact the real estate market here in Toronto. Number one, outward movement. Similar to mass production vehicles in the 50s and the 60s, everybody started moving out into the suburbs, more so in the US than in Canada, but we definitely saw that impact as well too here in the 90s and in the early 2000s. And we're still seeing that here in 2016 because people with families, they wanna live in safer communities with larger homes and more land. And typically when you live out there, you're definitely gonna need at least one, if not two or three, cars. And with GoTrains and TTC now having access to the suburbs in the 905 region, it's definitely still encouraging more people to live outside of the city. Now we all know cars cost more money to own and maintain, but what I do know in speaking to some of my clients is they definitely do want privacy, reliability, and definitely a lot more freedom. Still have to deal with a hell of a lot of traffic. I mean, it'll probably be even worse than before. But at least the car can calculate the fastest route to take you there, and maybe it can drop you off and find a parking spot on its own. How cool is that? And I personally believe dealing with traffic will not be as much of an issue for people anymore because they're going to be so distracted. They've got their phones now, they can talk, they can work. They might even be able to join a meeting by teleconferencing in from their car and then that way they don't miss anything. And if that jerk on the highway cuts you off, you'll know it's not him. He'll just say, it was the AI. Number two, Uber productivity. This one is so key for me personally because as we all know in my business, I drive a lot. That's why I filmed videos in the car. And if I didn't have to worry about where I was going, about getting lost, parking, speeding, all those types of things, my life would significantly improve. I can do what I do best, which is spending more time with my clients, really, really focusing and talking to them and educating them on the process of buying or selling a home. Hashtag relationship. I can free up my energy and my focus to talk, text, communicate, do a video, write a blog post, eat lunch, or even take a nap before I arrive to my destination so I'm fresh and I can work. And for you ladies out there, now you can legitimately put on some makeup without even worrying about it. How amazing would that be, guys? Honestly. Number three, no more TTC and go. For the 905ers and the TTCers out there, I know you guys love your mass transit systems, and I think they're still wonderful, and they will always be around. But with wide-scale adoption of self-driving cars, I can imagine that there'd be a few of you that would rather just take the car to work. And if you live in the GTA, you need a car anyways, so you might as well use it. Okay, number four. So you may or may not know this, but Uber is fully testing driverless cars or taxis in Pittsburgh as we speak. They're offering free rides to people just to test it out. But don't worry, they got engineers in the car that can help stop it if necessary. My guess is, and it's already happening, is there will be almost completely no necessity for having a car in downtown Toronto. It'll be easier, cheaper, and more convenient to actually use an app to order a car through Uber. And honestly, that's what I would do if I lived downtown, and even if I was showing property or seeing clients. Okay, now here's a bonus idea for you technophiles out there. So imagine you're coming from the 905 in your driverless car and you're going to work in the morning. It drops you off at work, but instead of going to park itself, you can designate the vehicle as an Uber vehicle for the rest of your workday. That way, you won't have to pay for parking. The car will be helping you to earn money while you're also at your job. And when you're ready to go home, it just comes and picks you up and takes you home. So not only is the car self-driving, but it's also self-paying. Get the hell out of here. Man, it doesn't get any better than that. And that's an idea definitely worth exploring. So in conclusion, I don't believe self-driving cars will necessarily change things very dramatically here in Toronto, as people's appetite and demand for larger homes in the suburb communities will always be there. But then there's also demand for people who wanna live in the city without a car too. But with driverless cars and self-driving vehicles, it could encourage people to want to live out in the GTA more because now we can telecommute, work from home, or maybe even work from your car. From a downtown perspective and living in condos, with driverless and self-driving vehicles, you can definitely see 
the non-necessity of owning a vehicle downtown, when you can easily hail one from the app so much easier. We might come to see empty underground parking spots. Maybe developers won't even build underground parking spots anymore. And they might have to build sort of lobby-like areas where cars can wait for the passengers to come down, kind of like an outside lobby. So whether you want to live in a 5,000 square foot mansion in the GTA, or you're a student in the city renting a 300 square foot multifunction space, you can be sure that you're probably going to get ferried away in a driverless or self-driving vehicle in the very near future. So if you like this video, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. Please like, comment, or subscribe. I would really, really appreciate it. Until next time, take care.